Um, okay, so we've got some hearts. Yay! So that means we are working. Okay, so um, let's just. So I think it's working on Facebook in the background. So thank you so much for joining us. Apologies for a little bit of a, a tech blip. Um, this uh, is our first time, as I said, on Periscope. We are hoping that we are over on Facebook at the same time. YouTube is not playing ball, so apologies to all our YouTubers. Um, we're going to have to pick the upload. Um, or join us over on Periscope and Facebook. So this is the very first episode of Spirit of Chin Woo, uh, the about to be new podcast and vlog and blog as part of Telford Chin Woo's digital platform. Uh, my name's Katie Woodland. I am uh, the digital strategist behind uh, Telford Chin Woo and who is here with us is our wonderful and absolutely phenomenal founder, Lisa Smith, who it looks like that's me, it's not me. Um, I've overtaken her account uh, to get here and interview her. Um, so she's going to be explaining how Telford Chin Woo came about um, and give you all of the goss. Um, while Lisa is talking, I will be trying to check up with what you guys are saying to us over on Facebook and Periscope so we can't answer your questions. Uh, so we're going to ask Lisa and uh, some questions first and then we're going to go in and give you more goss um, and delve a little bit deeper. So um, thank you for joining us Lisa. If you'd love to start by telling us um, a little bit about your background, so how Telford Chimwu came about. Okay, um, I was eight years old when I started learning Chinese martial arts. My parents wanted me to learn self-defense because where we lived was not very, very good and um, it was an area that they just wanted me to be able to protect myself. Um, so reluctantly I got dragged to a sports hall with over 50 people, mostly men and boys. I think probably me and one other girl because back then there wasn't very many women that did this and um, just put in um, a room and, and, and started learning. Um, I did that for years and years and in 2002 I wanted to become a coach so I started a two-year apprenticeship uh, in London and uh, went to Malaysia, learned some um, Tai Chi and some more of our techniques um, and then put it into my own syllabus uh, when I moved to Telford uh, 2008, started uh, teaching pretty much four days a week in Telford and it kind of t ended up taking over my life and became from my hobby to my career. Um, in 2015, we got Club Marks for England, the first club in Telford to be awarded. And it's a bit like the FA coming in and ticking the boxes and saying that you have um, everything in place to be a safe and successful club. Uh, so that's pretty much you know, us. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really exciting, being the first club in Telford to be awarded Sport Mark England. Um, do you know, and this is probably just a little bit off, off the cuff here, do you know how many others in the local area have been awarded it, or are you still kind of um, yeah, a minority? At the moment, it's just Telford Tigers. Um, I'm sure there will be more because at some point all the schools and leisure centres will expect you to have Club Milk Sport England. Uh, Sport England is like the, the governing body for all sports in the UK, so it's it's quite a high status to get. So it's, quite an, exclusive, it's quite an exclusive little club um, over here in Telford then with just you and the Telford Tigers. They are hockey, are they? Hockey, yeah, ice hockey. Ice hockey. So unless you want to uh, get bash, bash up against the wall and race around on ice, um, to guarantee you're being looked after properly, you do need to come on over to uh, Telford Chin Woo. So even though you started as Kung Fu, you don't just do Kung Fu, do you? And I think this is what's so fabulous about you. So give us a little bit of insight into all the wonderful things you do at Telford Chin Woo. Yeah, uh, we do lots of different activities now. We started off with Kung Fu and um, sort of a sparring part of it, which is now our San Chow, which is bo boxing mixed with uh, Kung Fu. Um, but because obviously with doing the Kung Fu and it's quite intricate to teach, we had to break it down. So we took sections of it and we amalgamated it and moved it with different stuff like Tai Chi, yoga, mindfulness, um, and then when, um, we went, when we went over to Malaysia, we learned Chinese lion dance and flag dance and weapons. Um, and then in 2010, where we actually became a community club, uh, I partnership with about six different martial art clubs. So we now have Budo Tai Jitsu, Modern Close Quarter Combat, uh, BMMA Kickboxing and Karate, um, 
sort of different and Thai boxing as well. So there's different martial arts that come under our sport. Um, and then we have different um, coaches providing different activities like salsa or street dance or Zumba. So there's lots of different things to, to get in with. And and you um, are supported by lots of different partners, aren't you? So um, it was really uh, interesting for me when I was updating your About Me page to, to be listing partner after partner after partner after partner. Um, do you want to tell everyone about some of the people who have helped support Health Tomo, the work that they've been doing to support the local community? Um, I think that's why one of the reasons we've been quite successful, because when I moved to Telford, I didn't know anyone. I had no friends, no family. And I just went into the council and I said, right, this is who I am. Um, how can I get into the schools and what can I do? And from there, the council sort of put me in contact with loads of different groups that were doing um, different sports. And um, I kind of ended up becoming the go to person for all the sports combat policies at the council and club links and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, being different partnerships with different schools, different colleges. Uh, I think we've literally been into near enough every single school in the, in the area. Police as well, they've helped support us. So what have you done with the police? They supported, when we had um, a centre in Wellington, they supported us financially. They helped with our project to keep children off the street, especially teenagers. Um, and they also came to all of our events and had a notice board put up outside the venue as well to show that how we were helping the community and that if there's you know anything that kicks off you know anyone's scared of anything or you know anything happening in the streets that people are worried about they, there's someone there that they can contact. Um, and then, and, yeah. I guess in that way then you've kind of ended up coming full circle if you were thrown into it to keep you safe keep by you your safe. parents right. um, and then they were supporting to help people who are feeling unsafe or those who are kind of just struggling and need a little bit of love so that is one of my goals apologies um so I mean, that's really powerful. I bet you didn't envision that uh, as your eight year old little self at the back of the <laughs> back of the hall, surrounded by sweaty, sweaty, smelly boys. Because when we're young, they've all got diseases, haven't we? They've all got what is it, cooties. And um, so, you know, imagine. And so you are an extremely successful uh, mom artist and I don't think you've kind of given yourself enough credit so I would love you to 100% sing your praises um, and tell everyone just how fabulous you are um, and how um, much of a, a really established sportswoman you are. Thank you, <laughs> it's really cool. Um, yeah, I've, I've performed for the Queen a couple of times, I've done some championships and got British champion, European champion um yeah I'm Tai Chi champion as well British championships in 2014 that was just before my first operation so um now I'm passing on my knowledge so I can take people to competition we've got over 50 we've well we've trained over 50 people um in championships British British championships two world championships so yeah we've done quite so well yeah, so if anyone out there who's interested in martial arts, like you are, you are literally in the presence of somebody who's been in front of the Queen. Um, and our lovely Queen is now under complete house arrest. So nobody is going to get an opportunity to do that for a very long time. Um, and in the presence of pretty much martial pretty arts, much martial arts. Team, helping Help people you. get to become world champion and follow in footsteps. So if, you, if you've got martial arts ambitions, um, like Telford is the place to be. Like I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> we're, we're in the centre of the whole UK, so it's great places for competitions and you know people to come. People come from all over the country to train at our centre. So um, yeah, it's quite an achievement. And working with so many different martial arts clubs, you know, that wasn't it wasn't heard of when I first moved to Telford. Everyone kept themselves to themselves. And I think I've managed to bring them all together and said, look, we need to work together. We need to share knowledge, share resources, share coaches and just help each other out because there is enough grants out there to support everybody and enough tickets out there so everybody can be part of the team. And I think that's such a refreshing uh, take on, um, I mean, because obviously you, you're in competitive sports, so it's very difficult to not then take that into running your business and fighting against other people who are potentially um, 
you know, competitors in the business world and actually deciding, hey, do you know what? We're going to be stronger together. Yeah. Um, and, and you're right, it isn't something that happens uh, a lot. And thankfully, it's been something that's been really, really powerful for, for you and maybe other people who would have floundered um, if you hadn't been there. So obviously, uh, the, the dreaded uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, has thrown a lot of... Um, you know, fitness and health and wellness places um, into a bit of a dark, dark hole. Um, and so one of the ways that I know you are diversifying is to create a bit of a digital footprint. So for those people who are listening to this and aren't local to Telford or are still in lockdown, how can they benefit from all of your expertise, all of your experience, uh, now that they are obviously really inspired to, to have a go? How is best for them to kind of get involved? Yeah. Well, we started a coach's education program before this happened and we're in the middle of training and a couple of people qualified in February. So we're kind of building a really big team now that can put on loads of different um, martial arts. And um, if people want to click onto our site on our Facebook page and get the links, um, they can come and join us and, and train from home. So it's, it's quite a good time, especially for those people. I mean, we have one lady who is a recluse. She does not come out of her house apart from coming to our Tai Chi group that Nikki um, provides. So now she can train from home as well during this time. So all those people that thought, do you know what? I can't get to the club. They've got no excuse now. They can come and join us in their living room. <laughs> you heard it here first. You've got no excuse. <laughs> no excuse. Push the sofa back and, and get um, get involved. So one of the really fun things that I know you guys do is at 10 o'clock every Monday to Friday is you do live live living room fun, don't you? So you don't have to be a member. You just have to be um, on either Facebook or and now Periscope um, or YouTube and join in from your home. And one of the really fabulous things is that that often these little classes are taken by your young stars rather than your kids. Um, so what was the idea behind getting those, behind those guys behind the camera? Yeah, um, well, Sally, our online manager, she's um, one of our lead coaches and her children also train with the club. The club is very family orientated. So it was her idea to get her kids involved because they've got a lot of energy and they can do a lot more than we are. Uh, we can at our age, you know, I'm 40 now, so I can't jump around like I did. Um, so from there, I approached our online um, manager and I said, look, could we get our seniors to provide the activities as well? I mean, two of my seniors have been with me 12 years, so they've got lots of experience. So that's where we went from there, getting our young ladies you know, jumping around and, and providing, you know, a team of activities and passing on their knowledge. And I think that's what's so beautiful about Chin Chelsea and Wu is it, it's not aimed at just people who want to um, become expert in Pilates. So if you do, you're in the right place. But if you just want to have a go and you just want to see whether you can keep up with some some young uns, um, and I can you know hand on heart say I thought I was fit until I tried the other day. Um, is is it fun? It is fun and there's lots of um, other people showing their knowledge and experience, regardless of whether you are really young, um, potentially fit and, uh, and middle aged or, or older. You know, th there's something for everyone. And, and so you can join that uh, Monday to Friday every single day. And is that something you're thinking of keeping up after coronavirus? Yeah, I've already mentioned it to the committee. There's a lot of people who can't come to the club. And some people who can come to the club mentally they don't feel ready they don't feel that they can keep up with someone that's been doing it for a while or someone that's younger so that was really one of our big ethos is, is that the club should be open to everyone you know regardless of age ability you know um, gender so we can provide it from home people don't you know they can even come on with a blank screen so no one can watch them so there's that you know we've taken down that barrier yeah, and I think this is, uh, when you mentioned gender, it occurred to me the first time there is, do you think there still is a bit of a gender bias when it comes to martial arts? Have you found that or? Um, I haven't personally because I literally am a man with boobs. <laughs> I, I go in with, come on, this is what I need and how can you help me rather than please, you know. Um, so when it comes to lots of the martial arts, groups around here and if I go and travel as well 
um, I think I have that presence from doing martial arts that puts me in a position that people do respect me and that I can go in and, and feel quite confident. And I think I pass that on to the girls that I teach. 50% of our students are female. Mo most of our coaches are actually female as well. So I think that the they thought if she can do it, I can do it. So the people that are coming on board now don't see, you know, as any different. Whereas when I grew up, it was like one, one or two girls in a room for a hundred of men, you know. So yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to be at the back of that <laughs> class. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think I've set the precedent for anyone can do it. So um, yeah, we've been quite lucky with our club, but I'm sure there are other clubs out there because it is a predominantly male orientated sport. Yeah. But hopefully, now that with all this girl, I get I, um, the sport in England are doing this girl can and loads of different things at schools to integrate women. So I think there's quite a lot taking place around the country. So sometimes parents probably get a bit worried about the whole idea of martial arts. Um, so what, what would you say to um, mums and dads whose kids maybe want to give it a go, but they're not quite sure about whether it is, um, and, and the perception is often, you know, well, it's, it's encouraging violence, um, which, you know, having had a go myself, and um, I my nephew, my nephew and I do for a little while, no, it isn't. Um, but what would you kind of say to, to help uh, mums and dads who are new to the idea um, so that they understand it enough to feel confident in letting their kids have a go? Yeah, there's quite um, a big stigma when it comes to martial arts and fighting because people think you're just getting in a ring and punching each other in the head. Um, a lot of martial arts is in contact. It's all sport, it's all exercise, it's fitness, it's circuit training, it's you know stretching for 20 minutes to make you nice and flexible. Um, yes, there is an aspect of um, the sparring side. We don't call it fighting in our style because it's a touch point. So you literally just touch as soft as a feather and no one gets hurt. Um, there are different martial arts and there's different you know levels of it. So people can, same with boxing, you can go and do semi-pro or you can go into professional where you're you know, physically hitting and knocking out and things like that. Um, but there's different pathways for everybody. So if someone's not interested in that sort of side of thing, they can come along and just join in for the fitness side of stuff. And then when it comes to the sparring, there's something else that we provide for them. So they can do it to the air, they can do it to pads, they can do it to the bags. And it, it just really helps release that aggression and anxiety and stress, you know, especially if they're being bullied, they're not allowed to hit back and we teach them to be disciplined and respectful. So they kind of, I think it's the opposite. And I think a lot of studies have proved that it's actually the opposite of violence. You know, it's a last resort to, to you know, to hit out. And, and a lot of um, martial arts is all about control. Mm. Um, and anybody um, who is acting in anger and fighting, it's, it's a loss of control. So if, if you are a parent whose um, young person is potentially a little bit um, out of control at the minute, then it might be worth um, definitely making them do this Monday to Friday with the kids, because I guarantee you they can't keep up. <laughs> Um, but also, you know, think about it, it becoming a way to, to help them heal. Um, and obviously, exercise has lots of benefits for mental well-being. Um, and as part of your, your club, you do lots of things about um, with today being the beginning of mental health week, it would be a little bit negligent not to mention it. So obviously, that's something else that your, your club's heavily invested in. It's not just about physical wellness. It's about emotional and mental wellness. So so what kind of things do you do to support people's mental wellness? excuse me, mental wellness? Yeah, um, quite a lot, well, hundreds of our um, students have got mental and physical health issues. That's why they come to us because they can't access mainstream martial arts. Um, and we provide a mindful movement program, which is, is basic gentle exercises, strength, stretching and breathing techniques. And it's all derived from um, Tai Chi. So I learned it in 2002 in Malaysia. And three times a year, I travel down to Harrow to, to practice. So it was, you know, all those years of training amalgamated into a program that could support people mentally and physically. Because a lot of those people, you know, they can't jump around in Kung Fu and Sand Shell, but they could do the slower sort of stuff. Um, and it's just a way of challenging um, challenging them to do something. You know, they can, they can sit in a chair and start and they can work up rather than coming to the club and, and joining an activity that's too hard for them. 
So it's just it's more of a gentle, simple exercises that everybody can do. And it's adaptable. I mean, we have three tiers. So we have a, an easy option, a medium option and a hard option. So people can pick which level that they do. And then they don't feel like they're out of depth or it's too easy for them. And I think that's really interesting that you say, you know, you, you can start in your, your chair. And often when we think about any kind of exercise, we automatically go to um, jumping, running around and, and are um, less able to do those sorts of things. You automatically think that it's not something that's that's for you. Um, and, you know, and program means that there really is no excuse I'm going to say this a second time there is no excuse <laughs> um, so exercise is obviously really really powerful for our emotional well-being it gets our endorphins going which is kind of that um, fight flight uh, system it helps you boost your serotonin which is your happy hormones so if you're feeling really sad one of the things that's really powerful to do is to do a little bit of exercise um, and while uh, the lovely Lisa is a, a phenomenal um, get in the ring and take the other people down kind of person is you don't have to be doing that as you've just heard you can just join in with the the community and I think that's the other thing as well is even though it's a competitive sport in the way that you've approached your business you've built a community of other business owners and you've translated that into the community of the people who are coming to your classes and those who aren't coming to your classes. So would you say that um, community is kind of the, the core mission uh, and values that's at the core? Because that's what I get from seeing you guys from the outside. Yeah. Um, when I first moved to health, this was my hobby. And I was meant to be the the day. So I'd sit at the computer all day. And then in the evening and weekends, I'd be jumping around with the children. Um, and from there, I started training a couple of people from the job centre to, to, you know, to pass on their knowledge. And they found it really, really difficult. And I thought, do you know what? How am I going to get this out to everybody? You know, because if I passed away, I know it sounds quite morbid, but everything just stops. So I thought, right, it needs to be a community affair. Everyone needs to get involved and it, I can just basically create a legacy. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and so the powerful thing is, um, as we briefly mentioned, um, that you are now really, really pushing your digital footprint. Um, so would you like to kind of uh, first, hearing it here first to a lot of the, even Telford Chinwoo communities, talk about the things um, that are going to be available. So for those of you who are listening, not close to Telford, um, you're about to find out how you can still be involved with the community and get everything you need um, without maybe uh, traveling hundreds of miles. So what, what's coming up for Telford's, uh, Telford for Chin Wu's digital footprint? So the main thing is our online um, live sessions that we're doing three times a week. These are our, um, our martial arts sessions. And then we've got um, Jay, who's offering his um, kickbox in the karate sort of side of stuff. We've got Nikki, Amici, and uh, Lisa, who are doing our mindful movement program. Again, they're all live sessions, so we can have members and non-members joining in for, for different activities. We've got um, our challenge of the day. So we're putting challenges on Facebook so that people can do from home. We've got arts and crafts as well, because you know we are a community club, so it's not just about fitness, it's about the mental health. And studies have proved that the you know artistic side of things is really helping people right now. So we're putting arts and crafts and things, you know, baking cakes. And I think Sally put the other day up making um, a, a different type of breakfast, which is also geared around our sort of uh, nutrition and healthy and stuff like that. Um, and then we've got our YouTube and Facebook and uh, Twitter accounts. So we're going to be, you know, putting videos up. And our web, our new website that's been designed by the lovely Katie. Um, on there, those that people, you know, can uh, look at and donate to the club. We've also got DVDs as well for reference materials. So there's there's quite a few things that, you know, different streams that people can learn from. We all learn. And so for those of you who who want to join the live session, so there's there's the fun live sessions that everybody can can have a go with on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. And then they do their actual real classes, uh, which is a virtual class online. So if you want to have a go um, and look up at the virtual classes online, head over to www.telfordchimwoo.com and you can literally book online and join the live class. Um, and you don't have to put your face on the screen, but if you do, you might 
get a little bit of help from the coaches. Um, for those of you who are already members, just to remind you, you can go and uh, join the live classes like that as well anyway. Um, and so with your arts and crafts stuff, I was I was intrigued. So what kind of arts and crafts stuff are you doing? I'm a hobby collector, so I might find oh, something else to join it. Right. <laughs> um, well, Nikki, one of our uh, coaches, is actually an artist. So she deals with a youth club and stuff like that. So we're looking at developing different ways that people can do drawings at home. One of our challenges was to design a like a t-shirt that people can wear during the COVID the COVID nineteen era. So um, you know, it's like a little competition that you know. Then we can get them printed. And you know, what did you do while you were stuck at home for six months or whatever? Um, and then. You know, <laughs> Don't, don't, don't put that out there. We don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, and then just different arts and things that people find on Facebook. There's lots of different links. And we, you know, when we come across things on Facebook, we just upload the link and then people can click on it and they can make things from home. Powerful. So I want to uh, just say a huge, huge, huge thank you to Lisa for giving up her time. So just to remind you all again, um, head over to Telford Chimwu on Facebook, Chimwu Telford on YouTube, and now we're on Periscope and we're also on Twitter. Um, do make sure you click over to www.telfordchimwu.com to find out more about all of the different ways that you can get involved in the club, both during the coronavirus and after. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, next week, we will be doing the very first kids takeover. So every other week, the community is actually going to be the guys and girls running these interviews. Uh, we look forward to interviewing lots more wonderful uh, sporting aces um, and hearing about them. So do tune in, do share this podcast and vlog and blog with people who you know maybe need a little bit of of love maybe need a little bit of community and as you just found out maybe need to brush up on their artistic skills so thank you once again to lisa the 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 wonderful uh, kung fu lisa who's uh, the the wonderful brains behind self with chin and we look forward to seeing you again uh, sometime next week thank you